everybody. Welcome back to the pregame lobby podcast, episode seven. We are on now. Pre-game Going by pretty quick. Lobby. Um, Dan, that's that's. Oh, did like, I say lobby? Th- wow. That's thirteen odd years ago, buddy. It still lives well that's in my true. mind. Eh, that's true. I mean, pregame network. Pre-game pre-game the network. pregame network uh, podcast, and then you could say like, "Oh, a subsidiary of Boon Syndication I'm LLC." <laughs> Uh, oh god no no none of that retarded none <laughs> um anyway so uh this is dan and anthony again talking about all the things video games that we like to do uh we are down joe for at least the first half of this he'll yeah, probably jump in fucking cretin <laughs> on his probationary the, the period subhuman. yeah his subhuman he fucking yeah he's running well we're it's give him some credit we're we're starting early. It's not so much he's running late, but he did mention he's hitting some traffic. So That's we'll true. see what happens. One way or the other, we're the, we're the show. We're the show here. Uh, I, can, <laughs> I can say that because he doesn't watch it back. So yeah, really coming across as uh, as he knows the, I love uh, him. Becoming human being. Yeah, he knows I love him. It'd, um. It'd anyway, so I uh, we'll start the show off as usual since it's only you and I right now. Mm-hmm. What have you been playing this past week? So I, I'm just about done with uh, my Gears of War playthrough. I've just kind of been cruising through it on casual, so Gears 4 is almost done. In the middle of it, I just stopped what I was doing and started playing Gears 2, and it's kind of been like whiplash back and forth between the two, but I've been having a lot of fun. Uh, you'll be surprised Gears 3 know, is my all-time favorite Gears. Oh, Gears, Gears 3 is phenomenal. I like the original trilogy as a as a sort, as a a story set. I've, I've told you plenty of times, Gears 3 is my favorite third person shooter if not yeah, if, you've if been I pretty needed, consistent on that yeah if i needed to get specific i could say cover base but like there the market is just so dry for third person shooters that i really don't need to worry about it but there's there's very easy ways to win me over in that field it's just nobody's fucking trying anything with it so it's the, it's a moot point it's, but what was the last big third person shooter aside from i guess gears or maybe even division like that came yeah, out recently because I mean, Division Two came out like over five years ago at this point. I w- I wouldn't consider Division Two a big third person shooter. I would I would barely consider Division One a, th- a a big third person shooter because while I like the Division One's gameplay, the RPG elements kind of take away from that to a certain degree. I think it's yeah. Just, you I think look it at those it work in its lens. favor though. Yeah, but like, here's the thing: they as, were as pretty upfront that yeah, it's but, a RPG first and then I a get shooter that. second. I 100 percent get that, and that's why I don't like when I think about like, oh, you know, I played the shit out of Division despite me not being in that particular I still field of in shooters. Awe that you did oh my that. god, it was like, ridiculous! You I had steamrolled the, the first game. <laughs> I had the week off. I played it, and there was just an endless stream of people to play it with. I played that game for basically a week straight. It was insane. But yeah. um, but no wonder why to, you got burnt out on it so quick. <laughs> yeah, but to to rewind, I um. I, I like that game. It's not as a shooter. It's as a complete package. Gears 3 still reigns supreme. You have Uncharted, which is like the other flavor of third-person action games, and that's it's pretty good, too, third-person shooter stuff, but uh, this, it's just a market nobody likes to touch for whatever whatever reason. So maybe, maybe you know, at that, that Xbox thing next month, we'll see a Gears 6. The only 6. thing that... Yeah, I, I do hope that we get a Gear Six reveal of sorts. We've been playing a lot of Gears Five lately, yeah. to, to just just horde mode. I do think that we should probably go back and play the Gears Five campaign. Like it was, it's still a good, competent like video game that is enjoyable with friends, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I never dove too deep into the horde mode until like we all started getting back into it anyway and i yeah. did not appreciate how much depth there was to like the the class system in that Shh. game they have like 25 different classes like it's mm-hmm. pretty wild uh, here's way the, more the, than uh, he, any other shooter <laughs> well what i what i'll say about that dan is we did try gears 5 when it came out we we, we did have it we did play it we beat horde, it we beat it in the no, yeah no we did we did but what i'm what i'm getting at is with horde mode which is what the both of us have been playing recently is it it launched in a very, very different state from what I, re- from what I remember. Oh, I did it? I don't, I don't remember touching it until way after it came out. I might be, and I don't want to, I don't want to go nuts because it's been a while. Obviously, I might be, I might be conflating it with Gears Four a little bit, but I'm almost positive uh, that, like, when the game launched, 
like classes were locked to certain characters. Like it was, it was, oh, it was almost sucks. like. <clears throat> It was almost like, um, remember when uh, Call of Duty World War II launched and it had very strict class systems where it's like yeah. it would it would hold back certain perks or you could only use yep. it with certain weapons and then yeah, like then halfway the through the, the lifespan they, they like, just cracked everything. it. Exactly. They just cracked it open. I'm pretty sure yeah. Gears 5 had that. And if not Gears 5, Gears 4 had those limitations and then they didn't course correct okay. until Gears 5. Which is why we didn't. Interesting. I don't think we we played it as much because we tried one of the two. It was either the Gears Four Horde mode or the Gears Five Horde mode, and the experience there was so lacking that it burnt us out going forward until we came back to it fairly recently. Yeah, I'll take your word for that one. Yeah, it is, I don't remember playing fun. Gears Five Horde when it came out almost we, at all. Like we, did, we, we definitely probably dabbled tried it. like a little bit. We but definitely not to it. the extent that we're playing it now. Like it's yeah. like we're spending hours in it, like oh, several nights a week. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It is. There there are some gripes, but that just becomes that's it is what it is, and it you know, I'm hoping that it, in yeah. a theoretical Gear Six they improve like placement of fortifications and what you can do with them and how they can shoot. It, it's very much like I think when when. And this is something I got from playing Gears 4, the campaign, because there are missions where it, like, it gives you a fabricator and you got to set up mm -hmm. uh, defenses. And I'm playing it, and it just it feels so much more archaic in how you can place them compared to 5. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't rotate them. You, you, you place with a different button. And I feel like they made marginal tweaks to that and then just ported it to Gears 5 with me. So I'm hoping a Gear 6 would do a lot more to improve and add variety and functionality to these things. It's it's an easy win. Yeah, you don't really hope. Easy um, win if they can I am kind of hoping for larger maps. Like the, the largest one that I can think of that I remember playing is the Swamp one. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but it, it's, it's like a, a dark, dreary swamp type was of map. One, it's very open. Gears 3? Which was also from Gears One, was a um, blood swamp, maybe or something. I'd have to see it. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, because there's there was a map in Gears One. It might have been DLC that eventually made it to Gears Three. I'm not one hundred percent sure because when I when I went to test um when I went to test Gears 3's sixty frames boost. I just hopped into a, a blank multiplayer map, and that's the one I played on. I'm like, oh yeah, this is from this is from Gears One. How is that? Whatnot. By the way, what the, the 60 frame frames? It certainly makes yeah. playing Gears Four awkward. <laughs> Odd man out there, <laughs> Gears Four doesn't have doesn't have 60 frames. Feels great. The camera, like the Roadie Run camera, is it's one of those mm. things that because of like it's I can tell it's an engine physics frames link thing that happens a lot behind the scenes with these games so you increase the frame rate and things get a little awkward it, it's it's much more egregious the shaking so but it's good it's fun okay. it runs good and it's fun you know it's a good time so Gears 4 you've been passively playing through I mean beyond your standard fighters anything else of note uh I wanted to. I re-downloaded a bunch of. I was just flipping through Game Pass for some reason. I mean, not that that's a problem. There's a whole catalog of shit to play, and I downloaded a bunch of games. So like, not yet, but next week I'll have a lot to talk about. Okay. As far as Fair games, enough. I'm gearing up for um, something that's not gears related. <laughs> as far as what I've been playing, nothing out of the blue, out of the ordinary, rather. Um, I haven't play too much of hell divers i'm probably gonna play a little bit after we're done here and check out yeah. the new war bond with the guns and everything um i kind of dove headfirst back into destiny there's a new title that i want to get before final shape comes out but mm -hmm. beyond that nothing nothing crazy just my standard rotation of games um and then you know we've been playing horde so there's that yeah. uh but yeah, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, I kind of put Black Mesa on the back burner for right now, just Man. because uh, the the title that I'm going for in in Destiny is like, it, it, if I am going to commit to doing what I need to do, like in a single night, it's going to take me like four hours to get that thing done, <laughs> and mm. that kind of eats up the rest of the time that I have. 
for the night. Yeah. So I haven't really been striking out, you know, aside from my standard lane of games. That's uh, fair. Yeah, so I, 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 nothing else that I've been playing recently beyond yeah. my my go tos. Um, so to, to, to I mean, be fair, that, it, was, not, it was it was a very quick week, and we yeah yeah you know, for the courts. Yeah. yeah, I I haven't circled back to Manor Lords. I I want to, um, but I just haven't done it yet. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's uh, it's really about it. Um, at least nothing is coming to me right now. Uh, mm-hmm. So, what do you actually? The, I do. I would like to touch on something first that it should be relatively brief, and then I know you'll have something to say about it, which is kind of why I want to bring it up. Yeah, go for um, it. I I put in the Discord earlier today in the uh, the Blue Team channel, uh, our, our our respective Halo channel of yeah. this multiplayer trailer that they, that they put out today. Did you did you see that or no? I um. I didn't sit through it all in one sitting, but I have. Oh well, no, you don't have it. to like have watched the trailer, but like you yeah, saw. But I saw it. But yeah. like my comment was just imagine for the briefest of moments if the game launched in that state. Oh yeah, now. for for Halo Infinite, all the stuff that they. If you go back to Infinite, they have a ton of shit to do now. Like Forge is phenomenal. They have a ton of multiplayer offerings as far as game modes and maps are concerned. Um. Uh, they haven't really added any new weapons beyond what Infinite launched with, but like, it is such like a fully fledged multiplayer offering now. Like, what is it? Two, three years after the game actually came out, mm-hmm. if it launched like this, it, like everyone would say, okay, Halo is back, you know. But it's just, <laughs> <sighs> I mean, what was we, the gap it, between Halo Five and Infinite or Six? Oh, or Halo Five. It was a while. It was a long time, yeah. I like I went through yeah. two jobs in the amount of time that it took for the for that <laughs> to come out. Jesus Christ! Uh, yeah. Halo. So I, there's no reason to think that we're gonna get any new Halo mainline game um, in anytime soon. Like it's gonna be at least five years from now. I, I think. would I I would say that's accurate. And quite honestly, like the like you can't with, with with Halo in the current state that it's in, you can't like start stop start stop constantly with infinite and then just immediately put out a new halo like that that, that, that there's brand integrity damage that you just can't like you've already like accrued so much of that you can't just all right we're gonna move on to the next one now all, all hunky dory mm-hmm. broken promises you know we just got the game going but you know we're gonna we're gonna bounce now like, look you can't i am if it were up to me like I'm okay with the long breathing room. Like I could always That's, pick up Infinite and yeah. go back and play Slayer and have a good time with it. Yeah. Um, we're never going to reach the height of the Halo Three days again, but you know, whatever. Never, That's, never That's say never. It's, on. Cer- it's it's certainly nowhere nowhere soon, but I wouldn't I wouldn't rule it out entirely. <laughs> it's, um, but yeah, it's, I, I yeah. still have a good time with the multiplayer. Oh, Just course. go back and pick it up, play a couple rounds. But you know, then I have to decide to okay, do I want to install a 50 gig file on my PC? again yeah. mm-hmm. it, it's just but the it's game file that. sizes while i understand why they need to be this way it still fucking sucks because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'm not gonna leave something that's like 50 plus gigs on my hard drive for an indefinite amount of time when i'm gonna play it like once every two months or three months or something that's crazy mm-hmm. it's crazy yeah um yeah that is more of a personal issue that i have <laughs> I mean, we we, we said uh, we said for so long that it's like the the main issue with Infinite is the content. It was very it it, it feels like we've been playing an alpha for like yeah, but three now it's years. finally I know it's finally that, pretty that, much done. Yeah, but that's that's the thing. It's just like after like I don't know. It's it's just Halo Infinite is such a weird situation because it it had everything going for it, and then they just didn't deliver. For three years, it's so strange yeah. to me. It's it's on it's it's on it'll always be bad. Well, for apparently, it, you know, they had a bunch of uh, um, contract workers that were coding the game, and it was just a bunch of spaghetti code, and they couldn't figure out how to how to unfuck the the game because no one that was at three four three understood this the slip space engine the well, way that certain contractors did so that built the thing. I have like there's no 
because because people will hear that and they'll try and find like a good guy and a bad guy in that situation. I just like there that that is so many layers of just screwed up that it, like I can't like because it's like they coded what, their own engine. What happened or well, like no, no, because the, just my no, perception just, of no no what, what happened? happened what happened what happened oh because oh, it's like yeah well. It's like, you have a good thing, which is they coded their own engine, but they outsourced it, which is a bad thing. But then they handed it off to an in-house team, which is a good thing. But the in-house team isn't capable of interpreting the code, which is bad on multiple levels. Because <laughs> it's just, it's just, it, it, I don't know. It's, you know me, I've, I've harped on it quite a bit where it's like, I, there need to be more in-house coded studios. Uh, not studios. In, in yeah, but I don't think that's where the industry engines. is anymore. But that that's 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 one of the many things that'll that's just bad. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not talking like you know oh the the industry it's 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 turning this way. I'm saying it's just an objective thing that's that's a good thing to have. Oh yeah. So it's yeah. like when when there were rumors of Halo uh, switching over to the Unreal Engine, I'm just like no, come on, that's that's not a good that's not a good idea. It's just I don't know. Yeah. Halo, <laughs> Halo Infinite is a mess, and it it, it is really. Like I, when all the things that we talked about it, I look at and I'm just like, it's, it's amazing to me that a studio that has one job, it exists for one solitary reason, three, four, three, literally all you need to do is make Halo. That's it. Yeah. And, and it's like they, they, they couldn't cross the hurdle of a third of not using a third party engine and using an in-house engine and I'm just like that that's troubling on multiple levels. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. No, from my understanding uh based on what you showed and what I've heard from other people I know that have played it it's, it seems like it's in a good spot now, but I that's I say that yeah, and like, they, you know, they, they they immediately get complacent and stop doing things to it and there's like oh, why would I open my big mouth? It's in a good spot now, which is a great thing, but at the same time like it's going to take a considerable amount of convincing on my part to get any of my friends to re-download that game and play it again. You know. I mean, I mean it, it, you, you know me, you, you give me you give me a heads up, I download it, you know. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, I know. Um, the, all right. Well, yeah. that that's that was yeah. something brief that I wanted to just touch oh, yeah, on I because I saw you. the trailer today and I was just like, man, if this game launched like like that, it ugh, yeah. it would have been a totally different story. Yeah, because um, I mean, Microsoft right. needs those wins. <laughs> uh, oh Jesus! Yeah, I mean, we could uh, I guess go right into the you layoffs wanna, you wanna if you want. About, you want to talk about that? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure you. You knew that it was it was coming. Well, yeah, of course. So, um, so all right, let's just recap what happened because mm -hmm. I'm sure people that are going to listen to this uh, might have a little bit of an idea, but not that much, and you know, mm -hmm. whatever. So I know that they, they shut down. Was it three or four studios? They shut down four studios. Okay, so Microsoft closed. They shuttered four studios. Um, that were that a lot of them were at least two were responsible for like really good games um and and, and they, they did critically well uh, i don't really know about sales data that much i know that tango um they made hi-fi rush which was like a game of the year nominee but it didn't sell well at all but it was on game pass so like it didn't mm -hmm. really need to sell but wasn't it also the same studio who worked on both evil within games Yes. So, uh, to, to Just crazy, we'll like what a shift. In we'll, 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 we'll get that. We'll get that big one out of the way because that's probably the one I'm the most knowledgeable about across the three, mm -hmm. across the four. Two of them aren't even worth mentioning, but uh, but this one. Um, so uh, Tango was essentially, uh, it is. It was the stu It was a studio helmed and created by Shinji Mikami. Are you familiar with who he is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I know who he is. Yeah. So. Well, Maybe just evil. explain Maybe, who he is anyway. Big, uh, longtime Capcom guy, made Resident Evil. Yeah, it's, it's he's a he's a storied and historyed veteran developer, and he went right. off and he made this studio. And um, he, there were a lot of uh, other uh, interesting, like so stuff that I'm finding out now is that there were a couple people in there, or you know, a handful of talents from older Capcom projects that got closed over the years, like. Uh, uh, not not to not to go too far off track. There was a studio within Capcom called Clover Studios, which was responsible for um, artsy games like Beautiful Joe and Okami and a few other oh, experimental okay. stuff. And you know he had he had those people with him. Um, so 
Uh, so basically, yeah, Tango Softworks. They made The Evil Within. They made The Evil Within 2. They made Ghost Ra uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. And they made something else which wasn't really as big a deal. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the projects started with Mikami or people close to him having an idea and going from there. Um, I forget the name of the guy. Joe jo Hansen something. Joe Hans. I can't remember his name because like, he's okay. only really known for Hi-Fi Rush. He pitched it to Mikami and they ended up making it. My take on Tango as an entire studio was that it was very much um, Mikami trying to get into smaller game development that wasn't necessarily Capcom size. He wanted to go smaller than Capcom. He wanted to do his own thing. And I think that the entire studio served to kind of suit his whims for a time being because during that okay. entire tenure, most of the ideas, or at least the prominent ones were ideas directly made from him. Um, so the thing about that is that Mikami left last year. So I'm just like I'm sitting here. They're kind. They're kind of spinning wheels where they were, in my opinion. They were spinning wheels. Mm -hmm. I'll probably get some shit for this, but I think that Tango <laughs> Studios had pretty much run its course. If that makes sense. Okay. Uh, like I said before, the I, entire yeah. time, the entire time it existed, it served to sit around until Mikami had an idea or a project he wanted to push. That's really it. And he was like I said, he was he left last year, uh, the, and. He wasn't the only talent that they lost, so there were other there were other things there. So it's it's I think it's a lot messier of a situation than people are making it out to be. A lot of people right now are just making it out to be like, oh, Microsoft is the big evil, and you know mm -hmm. it's like because you know obviously Microsoft's the only person laying people off in this in this industry <laughs> right now. As you know, it's you know it's not a bloodbath out there or anything. They're not cutting costs, um, uh, so and so people are gonna prop. Hi-Fi Rush is some kind of messiah kind of fucking thing. They're just like, oh, God, I can't believe it died too soon when it's in... Actuality, in my opinion, on Hi-Fi Rush was is like it's an action game in a vein of action games that you don't really see made anymore, which was nice. It had a decent soundtrack for people who like that ty type of music. It's like it was basically... It felt like a modern reboot of a Saturday morning cartoon. It wasn't anything special. It was special in the fact that these games don't get made anymore, and that's why people are hurting right now. On top of the fact yeah. that... On top of the fact that Microsoft immediately followed up by saying, you know, oh, we want to make smaller games that like do really well and are clinically so everybody's like talking about like that's exactly what hi-fi rush was blah 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 <laughs> so I say, but i will say just about on that on that take about it hi-fi rush wasn't a small game it was a relatively small game it, it, it was in development for like four or five years it cost money to make even though it, it right. even though i'm not i'm not going to say justifiably shut down i'm just going to say i think the studio ran its course i think the chances of a hi-fi rush sequel were slim Maybe we'll find out more information, but I just, I don't think the Tango situation, I don't think people understand, like, I think they're making it much bigger a deal than, than, uh, it actually is. So that, as far okay. as Tango is concerned, that one now, I don't know how much you know Arcane about Austin, Arcane Austin, I think also yes. shut down. So Arcane Austin, to my knowledge, obviously Arcane is one of those studios that has, uh, studios all over the place. Like they're, they're. Yeah. Developed. So the my understanding is that a lot or important talent from Arcane Austin got buyout offers and got options to stay remain within the arc the Arcane proper. Arcane Austin is known for two things. Um one is Prey, the reboot, not the sequel or the original. Which that's what that's one of the games I downloaded that I was gonna go through and replay because when I when I first played Prey, I didn't like it at all. It could, I don't know if it's updated from what Prey 2 was going to be, but I don't I know. Mean, when I made through a I, little bit of Prey, but it really yeah. wasn't for me. Yeah, I know Joe played it. Joe, what do you think about that? What do you think uh, about Prey? Um, Good job, Joe. I mean, it was... <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, no, I was I, that was a joke. Okay, yes, I, Joe is not here. <laughs> um, no, but uh, yeah, Prey, I, I remember being underwhelmed. I'm going to give it another go. Just, you know, because I don't want to shit on them rel rel relentlessly. I've been told I'm, I'm right. rather negative, and I immediately say, like, ah, good, you didn't deserve the job. I'm glad the industry's dying, and I don't want people to think <laughs> that I'm just negative for no reason. Um, and the other thing that they were known for is they were cleaning up the mess that is Redfall. So it's like they Ugh. did two, they, they, they were... What a disaster. 
Yeah. And then, and then on then, top of all that, they yeah. clo- like they they ceased development of the game before um, any of the promised content came out for people that already paid for it. Yeah, but my like, understanding is that fucked. they're they're doing something about like there's a link you can follow. And you yeah, get, there's some um, sort of like a refund thing or credit available. But like, how many people are gonna do that? Do oh, you yeah, reckon? I mean, the people that care should. I, I like. I'm not gonna say like, hey, well, this yeah, is they should. They, they, But what I'm saying is like, if you care enough to be angry about it, you will probably be. Um, uh, you'll yeah. probably be in the in the mindset to actually find and get that taken care of. That's all. Um, uh, it's just I just think like it's on the same vein as as like a mail in rebate. You know, like you really gotta want that extra ten bucks. Yeah, to, no, no, I, I, to, I agree. <laughs> to use that mail in rebate. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so those those studios were were closed down. Um, I mean, it's only going to get worse. We already we already know this, you know. Yeah, I, but it's uh, it's May, so it's yeah. we're almost halfway through the year already. Which one and of our one of one of the episodes we did? Layoffs. I forget what one of the episodes we did. One of the early ones, we were already like we were already at the watermark set by last year, like two <laughs> two months in to the oh, year. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and that, so, a ton of people got laid off already. Oh yeah. Um, but like, you know, high fire, like, uh, everything that Tango worked on, I feel like was, was, they were, it was all good games. Like some of them are better than others. Sure. But they were all good games. Like Redfall, it was just fucking terrible. And, but like, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's, it was funny terrible you... on so many different levels. Yes. So it, it, it's, it's, it's funny that you say that I am fully anticipating at some point this year, it's not going to last, but I am fully ready to see people come out and talk about how Redfall was a misunderstood game and the developers <laughs> are unsung heroes. We're going to go through that period. It's going to be like a week or something in the future because people just love to hate on Microsoft and Sony, justifiably in a lot of cases, but they're going to push it to that extreme where they're going to say like Redfall, it was just, it needed more time. It was, it was, it was misunderstood. You know, it was, it was, oh, yeah. it was savable. Yeah. It was, yeah, you know, when you build a car f- without an airbags, that car is misunderstood too, right? Yes, it was, exactly. It was um, yep. modern marvel of engineering. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh God! I mean, it sucks that people lose their jobs, but like, when you don't put out a competent product, then what are you expecting is going to well, happen? And that makes you an awful human being because they are deserving of the job, regardless of the job that they do. Oh God! Uh, but- I know the uh, another studio was responsible for like a lot of ports or um, uh, no, ports is the wrong word. Um, Mobile games, maybe, something like that. Yeah, that. That, that's that's why I said I, I said basically those other two studios weren't even worth uh, talking about because the way that they were structured and the way the way they ended up. I think one of them is a legacy studio that got just through the decades got crunched down. I think one mm-hmm. of them was the original uh, creators of the original Prey series, or they had that under their belt, maybe. Oh, wow. But but it got crunched down to the point where they were just basically a subsidiary at some point. One of them was yeah. strictly mobile games. Nothing of value was lost there because I like I looked at, <laughs> I looked at their history. It was like four mobile games, and I'm just like I've never heard of any of these things. You you yeah. I mean, like that's that's the safe one to cut. But yeah, so it's it's you know for whatever for I guess the biggest loss here is Tango, and it's not even from like a perspective of. Uh, up inspiring games. It's just it's that is purely on Microsoft's point. That is purely a uh, uh, PR nightmare for them because even though like if you if you yeah. look back at Tango, they were around for ten years. They made one really good game, one breakout hit, and one decent game. And then the other two is like the one's a mobile game. I can't even remember what it's called. And the other one is Ghostwire Tokyo, which isn't anything to not really impressive. So theoretically speaking, they didn't really have an amazing track record. Like in a vacuum, you wouldn't be weeping yeah. over this, but because of the history behind it, because it's it's it was created by a legacy developer who, even though he's not there anymore, that's just something that you have to contend with when you're handling the studio. It was a Japanese pri- a Japanese studio primarily, which Xbox has been 
hurting in that department ever since the 360 days. They just have had no luck whatsoever. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> and it's like it's funny because it's like with with the Japanese thing, it's like they struggled despite having amazing deals with certain people in the 360 days. They basically did not try during the Xbox One days, and then right as they were building up goodwill in the series days, they started censoring Japanese games, and then they do the shit with Tango. So it's just like I don't know what their their plan is there anymore. But uh, yeah, so I, yeah, unless you, I, I don't know if you have anything else to say about these particular. I'm just gonna no, go in circles really. talking I mean, because. It, it, I, I'm dancing around me saying this is not a big deal because people don't want to hear you say that when people lose their jobs. I'm, I want more closures personally because I, it's just I'm so fed up with these industry practices. I I would prefer like a really dark situation for a lot of people than a hard just, reboot. Yeah, or something like we we need a wake up call, and I think it's coming. But. Well, one would hope. Um, all right, so we can move on from that. Uh, the other thing that I definitely wanted to talk about today, I'm sure you know where I'm going with this, but the whole debacle with uh, the PSN account linking in Helldivers, I think that there is something to be said for the 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 tool, the one of the only, if not the only tool that the players have in in response to like a bad corporate decision, and that being review bombing, because. Mm. Helldivers 2 got review bombed so fucking hard that Sony was like, they were forced to reverse their decision. And apparently it was a, a fully Sony um, uh, move that, that or a fully Sony decision that, that, that as to, to the reason why this move was made. Um, although the way that Arrowhead handled it was nothing short of a yeah, disaster. Yeah, there, there was a lot of bad moving pieces in there, even from somebody who wasn't... From watching from the sidelines, obviously, I don't play the game religiously, so, like, if things were going on on the inside, I didn't see too much of that, but it's... Sony has this decision, and then you find out that, like, they knew the decision was coming, but it was kind of delayed by them internally, which is, you know, good or bad, depending on how you look at it. Um, then you have but delayed by a matter of months, and then yeah, and then they changed their terms of service to say mm -hmm. that this could happen to any game, and then they got yeah. caught changing their terms of service. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it was just a shady business oh, maneuver to try to fuck over yeah. players, which is nothing new, but mm -hmm. they got caught red-handed, and then after the game got uh, review bombed into oblivion. Then and only then were they like, okay, we'll not do this because, yeah. like, it's basically it. There's some there's some like degree of legal fucking ninjutsu going on here because mm -hmm. PSN isn't available in like 177 countries or some shit like that. Yes. Um. So when you purchase the game, when you buy a product, able to play it for months on end, and then Sony turns around and is like, yeah, we're gonna require account linking for everybody so now if you bought this game in in one of these many many countries that you now can't access it like you just threw away your money like mm -hmm. that's that's bullshit and then so that it got so bad to the point where like steam was offering full refunds way past their um their stipulations on the refund policy yeah. because there was no way in hell that fucking gabe newell was gonna be held for that amount of liability when it's on his store platform and like this was not discussed or disclosed almost anywhere when the game was in its marketing phase mm -hmm. um and now you're 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 looking bad on like three or four different fronts between changing terms of service barring players from playing ripping them off essentially you know like it, this was not going to affect me in any way shape or form but mm -hmm. I can still recognize the fact that this was a really shitty business practice uh, that Sony yeah. decided to do. But then not made any better by the way that the Arrowhead community managers handled anything. Like, I don't know if you saw any of the Discord uh, posts that people screenshotted. But yeah. they were like, oh, you don't like it? Well, you know, it's hard, like ask for a refund or something. Yeah. Like, hey, uh, bye. Like, they were just it's... being real fucking snarky about it. The, and so then I... one of them lost their jobs. Yeah, so because what I'm uh, what I'm gonna say is I talked I talked to somebody I know about this who kind of you know he's not he's not an insider but he was kind of giving me a different perspective on 
mm-hmm. a lot of what was going on. And he basically said that, obviously, you know, the uh, Arrowhead, I believe it's a Swedish company. Is that correct? Do you know? I think they're located in Stockholm. Okay. So, so they're, they're an overseas company. Um, and basically, my understanding is that most, if not all, of the community managers are outside hires that are... I think they're based here in the United States, or a lot of them. Like, basically, what I'm getting at is they're Discord moderators from anywhere. It's not. It's they're That's not smart. necessarily. Yeah, so they're not part of the company. They're basically they're not part of the the company proper. And so that's why they they you know they act like just like remember when we were talking about phantoms last week, and the kind mm-hmm. of people it attracts. Those are the same kind of people. They're just awful, power hungry, disgusting individuals. And mixed in there are fans of the first game that just stuck around long enough and worked their way into those positions. Like the the people that ended up apologizing, and you know the the ones that made the bigger sacrifices, and I believe the one that got fired. Was, were just fans of the original game that stuck around in the community and worked their way up in into that regard, you know, into those. Well, like you know, he not, made that one, he made that comment, and then he apologized, but like yeah. way overcorrected in the other direction yeah, to the so, point where he lost his job. Well, well, here's the thing. I mean, like none of those people were prepared for this kind of. But both the well-meaning people and the not so well-meaning people were not prepared for the kind of feedback that they were going to get. Like there were a lot of really right. scummy ones. Like there there's the ones that try to make it all political and they say like, "Oh, if you align a certain way, we're going to ban you." There was one that was gloating like, "Oh yeah, I'm very excited about the Sony linking thing because that makes it easier to ban people who are who are nasty." And I'm just like, "Well, that's kind of kind of kind of overplaying your hand a little bit there. I mean, most people that see that that's the kind of thing that a lot of people think like, "Hey, they they want overreach so they can ban people." And then you have a community uh manager to some degree saying, "Hey, that's exactly what we're going to do." So, that 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 community uh uh that the community facing part of the team and, you know, the moderators of the different communities were were definitely like they were not prepared whether they had good intentions or not, they were not prepared for the kind of feedback which led yeah, to Yeah, it was things. kind of a bloodbath. Um, yeah. But, like, look, I, I think it ended up in in the realm of good news, no matter how you slice it, because I don't remember the last time, like, a decision was so unpopular that the entire player base was basically unanimously, uh, like, on the same side and, and, like, used the Steam review score to their absolute benefit review bombed it and then got them to reverse the decision like that's actually kind of crazy when you think about it um like imagine something like this happened in cod you know like yeah. or any other like major mainstream game like that they would never reverse their decision it just wouldn't happen um but arrowhead is so small and this is such a golden goose for sony it's one of their most be- one, one of their best selling um uh IP is just full stop and that's because of the PC platform that's mm-hmm. not even because of 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 the exclusivity deal that is 100% because of the PC platform if you took PC out of the equation then it's like not even in their top 20 or something mm-hmm. um but because of the PC players fl- like rallied to this thing it's it's one of their most profitable uh, IPs mm-hmm. so I, I just find it pretty remarkable that uh, as a community, they were able to turn uh, to get Sony to to reverse their decision, and just uh, you know get them to do exactly what they wanted, essentially, which is almost unheard of. Yeah, it's it's a tricky situation because what a lot of people need to remember and realize is that it's going to be an uphill battle, like in any situation like this. It's always going to mm-hmm. be an uphill fight. They do not. Like I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to like get like uh, demoralize anybody because this is this is like these kind of moments and these kind of movements are essential for a better industry in the long run, regardless of how we get there. Because you know, it's people will always tell you it's just like why are you even bothering? It's a big company; they don't care about you or what. Like you have all these weird bootlicking sentiments like from from people mm. especially all the the console war uh lay uh, 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 uh what's the word i'm looking for the 
console, console left warriors. leftovers console console oh. war leftovers that will just like they're just like oh just make the account like there's so many smug people saying it takes two minutes to make an account like what's the problem the problem is like they don't need that it's very clear that they don't need it because the game functioned for months without it like you it's such an it's it's a small not even to mention they, the sheer number of data breaches that sony has under their belt Oh, like, yeah, if you really exactly. want to get that technical with it, yeah. you know, they are not a secure company. Um, no, yeah, they are, and, but, yeah. What, what, you know, what if you are mean? one of those types of people that wants to protect their data online, then that's also an argument that you could make. Because yeah, no, there's it, no telling when another data breach is going to hit. There's yeah, there's there's really there was there's no reason to add that, and it's but what I what I was getting at is like I said, I don't I don't want to demoralize anybody, but you it's. It's something you can't like really just say ah the fight's over and you got to you got to remain vigilant of these certain things because given the opportunity they will just do they they'll screw you over any way possible yeah. so it's 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 hopefully between this and like there's a, there, there is a lot of pushes all over the place across the industry that are just not going away anymore so I'm I'm hopeful for a renewed consumer mindset especially because as as like you know, you you've talked about it before. Like the the COVID bubble kind of bursts, you know. Mm -hmm. and there's less there's less people who normally wouldn't be spending as much time in a game, sitting down and spending time in games. You're going to be left with the people that pay attention to the industry and are vocal in the industry. So it's definitely something that's going to you know pick up more and more as the industry shrinks more and more. But it's 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 going to be like pulling teeth with these people. It's not just Sony, any any major publisher, it's like Microsoft too, is if they do something that you don't like, you need to be as loud and as open and as vocal about it. And it doesn't matter who tells you like, oh, there's no point, you're never gonna hear them or, or they're never gonna hear you. Or uh, you have people who call you like all these kinds of names or say that what you care about is silly because like all like just ignore them. You just you need to remain vocal if you want change, and I don't. And it could be about something small, it could be about something big, but this is definitely a, a good step in the right direction. The, the, but the worst thing you could do is just remain complacent from one small victory. But we'll we'll, we'll see what happens because like, um, did you hear about what what, what happened with uh, Ghost of Tsushima? Um, I I don't think I heard about what you're referring to. I know that they went out of their way to be like. This game does not require a PSN account link. <laughs> so um, after well, well, all this shit that, happened, well, it does. It wait what? So the multiplayer component requires this tweet you... like from Sucker Punch no, 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 saying no, that the, they the don't they're not the, the, going to require it. The single player doesn't require it. The multiplayer does require it, oh, and because yes, yes I did and, know that. Yeah, and because of that, those same companies where PSN is not available will not be able to buy Ghost of Tsushima at all including the single player so well, that's shitty it's 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 sent some kind of ripples into sony we're just it's just, we're just gonna have to see if if they keep up with that especially with, because their whole thing is obviously sony is fairly new to the pc market as far as like mm -hmm. these these kind of things so i don't it's i don't know if it's them gearing up to like kind of have some kind of rebuttal or if it's just them settling into some kind of groove we'll see what happens but they they need yeah, I, they're, they're going to try and push that for multiple reasons. Number one is control. Number two is they need to say like, oh look at how many PSN accounts we have. Look, that's exactly we're grow, what we're it growing is. in the it's market. The, it's you know? a growth thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll which I, I don't understand because like it's still published by Sony. So how does that not show? It's listen. Or, it's I'm just, not a, none of this shit makes sense. None of it makes sense. It's, yeah. it's 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 arbitrary numbers that need to be shown somewhere up at the top in order to impress some shareholders and investors. And it's just it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Um, uh, and okay, so some while we're on this topic, subject, whatever, yeah. did you hear about um, anything going on with Escape from Tarkov? Uh, I'm not. That's not a game I follow. I do know of. So I know of some of the more predatory practices involving. I don't really uh, follow it either, but so like because I'm following Gray Zone Warfare, or I'm keeping an eye on it like this is in the same sphere of influence um like the developers of of tarkov battle state games they it's it, 
this is probably way more egregious than anything else that I've ever seen in in game. Like as far as shady business practices go, this is really bad. Uh, so the game has been in beta, early access, or whatever for years, right? It's never technically been feature complete. There's always been, uh, you know what it is, right? Before I go any further, like the genre. I'm I'm aware of how like that particular genre works, even if I'm not particularly. Uh, it's it's an extraction that. shooter. You go yeah. with your friends. It's yeah. it's a primarily like a PvP experience. I don't I don't play it, so I don't know if there's any PVE at all in the live game. But it's I mean, you collect shit, you get out, you can sell it or trade it on the on the market that's outside the game. Um, but people have wanted a strictly PVE mode like forever, and so much so that. There's been mods for it, but the mods were not officially supported. They were all they were also like a bannable offense in oh Battle God. State's eyes. Yeah, so they came out with this new version update thing that is called the Unheard version, right? Like that's what they decided to name it. They they could not have picked a worse name, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, so they like if you want to talk about pay to win. Uh, uh, practices it does not get more apparent of it than this now i'm not an expert i'm so i'm going to do my best to highlight the main things that stuck out to me that uh that really like you know give this a pay to win uh title so if you buy this unheard edition of the game which by the way is 250 dollars, that's what they're charging for this i don't know if that was that's... Something that you may have heard in the circles that you follow. All I, um, all I, all I heard game, was that it was game is 50. Oh, okay. The base game is 50. Like, And they decided that it was a good idea to, to slap a $250 price tag on this fucking thing. Which means that somewhere at the dev headquarters, in a boardroom, that there were a bunch of people sitting around discussing what to charge for this game, for this product. and And at some point... Two hundred and fifty dollars got all the way to the top, and then somebody greenlit it. Like I don't understand. <laughs> it's, listen, some people. It's it's just people make boneheaded decisions and, and get the get the stuff. But like this is beyond bonehead. I, there's no other game that costs even close to that just for a ticket to entry. Like you can you can say Star Citizen sure because of the ships, but you can still buy like a forty dollar ship. Like it's not like you have to buy one of these crazy expensive ships. You know, um, like it, okay. It's, anyway, it's so it's crazy. It's crazy, but there's no rule against it. So you know, weird, weird things right. happen. <laughs> Only everyone is now saying that Tarkov is just totally dead. Like it's like, this is it. Like they they have officially <laughs> committed suicide. Um, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of that so, going around in the industry. Huh? <laughs> oh god. So some of the things that you get in this two hundred and fifty dollar unheard edition is primary uh, uh, a priority matchmaking for six months okay mm -hmm. not even like permanently priority matchmaking for six months you get like this piece of equipment that makes enemy ai harder to spot you so like if you're passing through like a high threat zone or something um and you can get melted by the ai it just won't they just won't engage you um you get like this armband that shows you that you purchased the the $250 version of the game, much like another group of people in the archives of history <laughs> got the shit out into the stick at some point. <laughs> um, uh, what else was there? There was, uh, uh, there's other equipment that like gives you an edge. Like uh, I, I think there's like weapon attachments that will give you uh, increased accuracy or like less flinch or some shit like that. But like just based off of the priority matchmaking, and the enemy AI that will just not shoot at you if you come within like their vision cone is just fucking crazy. Like it's just blatant pay to win shit. And yeah. they, so they they announced it. They doubled down on it. They tripled down on it. And then they they they, they, they quadrupled. Like it's there was a video out there that I remember watching that like went over it really well. Um, but they were insistent that since the game was available to purchase and play it has never been quote unquote feature complete so because of uh this unheard edition this 250 dollars edition 
um, PVE was also going to be included as a game mode, but they were not classifying this game mode as DLC. So which justified the purchase, like the 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 price tag of of this product. And it's, I'm doing a really poor job of explaining it um, because I don't have all the information like right in front of me. I'm going off of memory. Yeah, I'm getting uh, the gist of it though. The developers basically were like, "No, you are never entitled to this. You like we, this is not downloadable content. This is uh, like a this is a whole feature that you have to pay for. Fuck you, pay me." There, and there, the there's, game... there's nothing greater than having like something like paying for something. Have something put in front of you with a price tag, and then hearing the words, "You are not entitled." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everybody who is even like remotely heard of Escape from Tarkov, there everyone is like, this game is fucking dead. Like, there's who is gonna who's gonna play and support this and pay for this? Uh, so it uh, it's just wild. It's just absolutely crazy. Yeah, no, it's it's some people. I mean, like, listen, we 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 talk about you know, big publishers and conglomerates and the industries and all that, but when you when you get people who are, like, on a smaller scale, like, they're free to do whatever the fuck they want, including making some mm. of the most insane batshit decisions imaginable. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, it's just, it's and wild, man. You, you buy a house, nuts. you can burn it down if you want. I don't know shit. Well, no, you can't, because then that's arson. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're in the house. They can't, they can't prosecute if you're in the house. Uh, someone tells me they would be able to. If you're dead, uh, anyway. you're not going to jail, idiot. <laughs> Maybe you have a, a safe room. Shut up. Oh, my God. Uh, anything else that you want to talk about? Because I think that just about reaches my weekly rant cap. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. There's, there's one thing. There's one, something, something I want to say real quick, if you, if you want to give me okay. a moment. Yeah, sure. Old I, court, I, my friend. I don't know how long this is going to take, but it, it's a small thing. Resident oh Evil 5. Oh, here we go. This effort to renew the belief that the game is somehow racist is driving me nuts. I'm just, I'm so, like, there's, there's, um, I've definitely talked about this before, but lately, this week, there's a clip going around of some guy. I don't, I don't follow any of these people, so I have no idea who he is. He looks like some kind of streamer. He came out and he said something like, you couldn't remake Resident Evil 5, and then he said it was because... And this part I remember verbatim because it's ridiculous. He said it's because of what he called obvious racial conflict that's happening in the game. And he said it hadn't aged well. And I am so sick of this. We had this discussion 15 years ago. And we, we laughed at them then, but they have not let go of this. They haven't. It's insane. I'm going to make this as crystal clear as possible to anyone willing to listen. <laughs> Chris Redfield was not sent uh, to Africa to kill black oh people. Resident Evil 5 is not a race war. It's insane to me. 15 years. I love years. Resident Evil 5. That was, that I was love so Resident Evil fun. 5. Phenomenal game. Didn't make me any more racist than I am now. It's amazing. It's a, I played the game and I remained at just the same level oh. of racism. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 just oh it's, it's it's nuts to me and 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 it, you have all these people because the new Resident Evil fandom sucks it sucks so bad it's just it's filled with <laughs> kids half my age that follow these weird influencers that are, just have shitty terrible opinions and old school uh, people from YouTube that do all like the scream you know jump scare shit. And it's just it's it's so it's so bad. And like the, the remakes have done so much damage because it attracts people who, th who don't know anything about the goddamn series. And so now this Resident Evil Five is is racist thing is is catching steam again. And this is a prime example of why you never listen to these people because back then Capcom quietly adjusted the enemy pool in Resident Evil Five, like back when the game was first announced. Mm -hmm. um, and people were complaining about it, even though nobody was really taking them seriously. You had people doing interview circuits where they, I, I, I quoted the one guy, TJ Storm, who was a voice actor, and he, he, he had that whole thing where just, just play the game. It's, it's in Africa. There's gonna be black people, and and I and freaking you have 
all of these virtue signaling people come out and they do they end up adjusting the, the, the pool, which is why you have various flavors of Caucasian in the in the deepest parts of Africa because it's just like it would be racist otherwise. Go figure. I don't think there's a single black person in in Resident Evil Four, but that's okay because I guess Spanish people are, are lower on the totem pole or whatever. But <laughs> they they made the, that concession to the people who were getting laughed at then, and you still have people ragging on this non-issue. 15 years later it's 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 insane to me i don't even know what to say but here's but here's the thing all that said i don't think you should remake resident evil 5 anyway so i guess like we we kind of want the same thing in the end even though (laughs) these people are fucking absolutely what have i become (laughs) yeah um i i I also find um i said uh, something else i found funny about this is the way that this guy whatever whoever the hell he is worded it and the way that other people worded it is they basically said they basically said in order to remake the game they would need to remake the game because like his reasoning was like <laughs> was like if they remade Resident Evil 5 they would basically need to remake it from scratch I, mean, I just found that funny I know that's that's probably not what he meant but I do find the implication that like one of the hurdles of a remake is that they would need to remake it <laughs> so stupid all of this is so ass backwards it's so oh it's God. it's so ridiculous to me that like fifty like <laughs> now hear me out here to remake it we must first remake, <laughs> remake it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I know I I know the implication was probably like you would need to take it out of Africa. I don't know whatever. It's I I'm just it's so stupid to me. Like that's 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 that just sent me up a wall because it's just like you have all these morons just saying it <laughs> and it's just like. You got your shit kicked in on this 15 years ago when everybody laughed at you. We gave you a little concession. Capcom made people whiter or whatever. There's there's a suspicious amount of whites and Mexicans in Africa. It's like a 50-50 swing for some bizarre and some weird mystery meat Asian looking motherfucker with the with the bull type. Yeah, he's he's got like this weird skin pallor, but I can't determine what race he is. But anyway, he he fucking he's in there and like it's like that just wasn't enough. And I, I'm just thinking to myself. You know, I I remember, like, you had, like, the developers fly out to Africa and they, like, they they went to these marshlands and, you know, they did it respectfully. There's a lot of black people here. But my point is, like, it was, it was, it, it's just, like, it goes without saying, but apparently you need to say it again. Resident Evil 5 is not racist, but I don't want it remade anyway, so the, the point's kind of moot. So, whatever. Uh, well, I can empathize with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, <sighs> shit. <laughs> I like how before you even took that first step onto this rant, I just heard a <laughs> just just a nice deep breath. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Well, that, that, I think that's all I got for this week. I don't think there's anything else that yeah, I, th- I want to cover that th- I'm thinking of. There is something I there is something I wanted to go over, but I, I think it's 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 better to save it for a day when the the three of us are here. It kind of relates yeah, to I Xbox. Think that, yeah. yeah. Plus, plus I want well, next I week. want this. Yeah, I want I want the stuff that's going on with Microsoft and Sony to kind of sit a little bit before we um okay. before we talk about it anyway because it, it has to do with that. Um, but yeah, I think uh, that's I got cool. I got my Resident Evil rant. Yeah. Out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, that was episode seven, I guess, of the Pregame Network podcast. Yeah. Got it right. Thank yeah, you. Go Good me. job. Yeah. Uh, thank, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for listening, and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.